Welcome friends to Farm Fresh Designs 59. In today's video, I've got three spring and or Easter projects and something special at the end of the video. So my first project is just a scrap piece of wood and I've had it painted white for some time um, because on the back, there's some pencil writings on it um, that I had a hard time getting off. So I had already painted it white, but then when I got ready to start this project, I decided that I wanted the bottom of it stained. Well, you know, it's already painted. So I took some Waverly Antique Wax and I'm just gonna put it on really, really heavy and then I'm gonna wipe it back. Now, I know I haven't used Waverly Antique Wax in a long time, but I'm actually out of my Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain. Um, but this works perfect today. But my husband is so sweet. Um, he's a brick mason, and a lot of times when he's on a construction website, if he sees just pieces of wood that are going to be tossed aside because it's just scraps, he always checks with the contractor um, and is always bringing me these wonderful pieces of wood. So I wiped it back with the baby wipe, and <laughs> then I realized I wiped it too much, um, so I just kind of spread, spread a little bit more on it. And this is the Dixie Belle Crackle finish. And I don't want to put it on all of this piece of wood. I just kind of want to put it here and there. Um, and, you know, if you've watched Teresa on Our Green Acres, she does this sometimes with, like, a candle. And I haven't tried that method. I should do that. Now, I'm using Rust-Oleum. Um, I believe this might be chiffon cream. And once again, I'm just kind of putting it on here and there. Um, and when you use that crackle finish, you need to make sure that it sets up really good. And it's going to have sort of a glossy finish to it. Um, and that does kind of help to see where it is. Now, I'm using Dixie Belle Haint Blue. And once again, I'm just putting it here and there. And you'll see why in just a few minutes, why I'm using this particular blue. But I love this color, um, but I want it to look a little bit rustic. Now I'm using Dixie Belle French Linen, and I love this color. And I like all of these colors together. And when you think about um, finding like an old piece of wood, you know, a lot of times it's going to have a lot of different paints on it. Now, this is one of the new decoupage papers that is being dropped on Decoupage Central's website today. Um, so this particular video, um, two of the designs that I'll be using actually dropped on the website this morning at 6 a.m. And this is a piece of decoupage paper that, <laughs> that has a spring goat on it. And, you know, typically at Easter, we don't think about goats we think more about lambs but um when i look at this goat it reminds me um about my dad had a goat one time <laughs> and he named it luther and we just love that goat um and when he had to go to the nursing home we had to give it away to one of our neighbors and he con he continued to keep the name of luther so when i thought saw this um decoupage paper with the goat on it i'm i'm doing this because of my dad so I'm going to put it in the center of it. So I need to kind of tear off all of those edges around it. And because it's already painted on the back, then I needed to um, not try to use the water method. And I painted the back of it so the background wouldn't, you know, bleed through that design. So the first mold that I'm using is the IOD Olive Crest. And I'm gonna put that little garland all around the edges and I'm gonna frame this little goat face. Now, if you'll look real careful, some of those flowers around that goat are blue. And that's where I came up with using the Haint Blue. And I thought about using that little pink color, but I didn't think that that would be quite as rustic as the blue would come out. And I'm using air dry clay and I put cornstarch in my mold and I push it down with my thumbs and then I just use an old credit card or actually this was a gift card and I just spread out the back side of it. Um, and you'll notice that a lot of times I'll hold that clay down because sometimes if you press too hard, it will pull that clay up 
and then sometimes it will mess up with the integrity of that mold. So I try to hold it down, especially when I'm running it over a big piece. And by using the cornstarch, it helps it to come out a lot easier. And then I'm just going to put one piece on one side. And then on this particular mold, it has the opposite side of the garland. I'm not sure if I'm saying it the right way, but you know, they kind of match up with each other. Now there's a little bit of gap with that garland and you'll see what I'm going to put in those gaps in just a minute. Now I had not um, put this piece of decoupage paper down yet because I wanted to kind of play with the placement a little bit. And I'm using Pent Art Decoupage Varnish and Glue. And it's a little bit thicker than DIY Liquid Patina, but it's a lot thinner than Mod Podge. So now that I've got it on, now I'm going to start putting my molds on. And I use the Tight Bond Thick and Quick Glue. And I just buy mine at Walmart. And it's in the blue and the gray bottle. And now I'll get those all put around that little um, goat, that little goat kind of frame his little face. And then there's going to be like a little gap up at the top. So on this particular piece, this comes from the IOD Floor de Lee. And it's not necessarily a Floor de Lee. It's just like a little piece that um, it doesn't have the bottom of the Floor de Lee. It's mostly just the top. So put that up at the top. And then I put the bow that comes from the IOD Jingle Mold down at the bottom. And it's actually on top of that garland. So I just gently press it down right there in the middle. And it kind of like loops over that garland. But I like the way it turned out. Okay. Now the next mold I'm using is the IOD Trimmings Mold. And I put one long piece up at the top. And then that little skinny trim that I'm using comes from the IOD Classic Elements. So I'm going to trim out this whole piece of wood with that little um, beaded trim from the Classic Elements. And initially, when I first started on this, if I had used a bigger piece of wood, then I was going to have just a lot more around that particular goat. Um, but I didn't have a bigger piece of wood. And then in the corners down at the bottom, just kind of fancy it up just a little bit. Then I use the IOD Ancathus mold. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right or not, so I apologize if I'm not. And there's just a little flower on that. And it looks like the flowers that's in the, um, the little trim around the goat head. Now I'm going back with the Dixie Belle French linen, and I'm going to trim out all of that I'm gonna paint all of that trim and actually a lot of it is still wet but it has had time to set up and if you use air dry clay I really encourage you to let it set up just a little bit and try to go ahead and paint it then because it really saves from it cracking now now I'm gonna glam it up and so I'm just using the um, gold gilding wax that's made by DIY paint. Now, some people might would want to use white wax, but I'm just not a really big fan of white wax. So I'm using the gold gilding wax because, well, I like to use it on a lot of stuff because I'm a girly girl. But um, I figured, you know, it's going to be for me. Um, and so, you know, it's got the rustic of the background, and I'm going to glam it up a little bit with that gold gilding wax. Um, and I just go over all those different molds. <laughs> and I do like it. So if gold gilding wax is just not your thing, you know, use some white wax on it, or you could use some dark wax. Um, but I like the way it turned out. Um, and I just kind of put it on pretty heavy. And then I've got a little bit of rustic and a little bit of glam. And I, th I think my dad would really like this. And then because I want it to look more like a little frame, then I just put the gold gilding wax on the side. But look at that sweet little goat. <laughs> Isn't she? I'm going to say it's a she because she's got pink flowers around her. But um, So I guess since my dad's goat's name was Luther... Um, this would be a girl, so I'm not, I'm not sure what I would name her, but let's, I'm just going to pretend that this is Luther's sister. But I love the way it turned out, 
And I like how that blue kind of picks up the blue in the flowers. And because it really doesn't have a back on it, um, and it doesn't have an easel like a regular frame, then I'm just putting it on an easel. So I would probably just kind of lean it up against something. But if I decided I'd want to hang it, then I, you know, put a little hanger on the back. But so what do you think? And are you somebody, do you think about goats being sweet or kind of aggravating because they like to climb over a fence? So if you're enjoying the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and become part of our family. Okay, so my next project is one of those little things of Vienna sausages. And I saw Lisa on our shabby cottage do this a while back, and I loved it. <laughs> and so I knew then I needed to make one of these at some point because, once again, my dad, he was so funny. He loved Vienna sausages, and I know that they are made out of Lord knows what, but he loved them, and he liked to eat them with crackers. And so um, when I saw that, I thought, oh, my goodness, I am going to have to make one of these. And so um, I painted it with Rust-Oleum chiffon cream. And this little piece of decoupage paper is like a little um, Easter chick. And so I'm tearing it all the way down to where it will fit on this. And then I put that on with decoupage varnish and glue. Now, you'll notice I didn't paint the back side of this one um, because the back side of the, or the paint is already a white. And I used this big old contraption to punch a hole on either side of it. And this is actually rusted wire. I think I ordered it off of Etsy. So it's already rusted, but when I use it, I have to be really careful because, you know, I don't want it to cut me or anything. And then I just make a little bitty hanger on this. And then I'm going to just put some little flowers in it um, at the end. But this is actually a transfer that I got at Dollar Tree. And I love their transfers, but they are so hard to find. Um, and this one is actually like a little Valentine's transfer, but it has a lot of script on it. So I'm going to put that all around this little, um, little can. And um, if you've not used transfers before, it is really important to spray it with clear sealer before you put it on, um, because if you don't, it's going to pull that paint up, and I just work my way around. Now, look at that knife. I was at the Dollar Tree the other day, and I saw that, and it's supposed to cut pool noodles, because it's not sharp, but it's kind of serrated. Oh, man, you couldn't put that in my cart fast enough. I love that new thing. And then... These are just some little flowers, and I think I got these at the Dollar Tree, too. And it's just a little hanging floral, and I just love it. And once again, this reminds me of my dad because he liked Vienna sausages. And so I had to actually buy a can of Vienna sausages so that I could make this, but um, I'm not a fan of them, so um, excuse Excuse me for wasting them, but I kind of dumped them out and cleaned the can up real good so that I could use it. But I love this little piece. Now, this last piece is just a little wooden rabbit that I got at Hobby Lobby. And, you know, right now they've started putting out their Easter and their spring stuff. And, of course, it's 40% off. And if, if it's not on sale at Hobby Lobby, I don't buy it. I wait until it goes on sale. Now, this is another piece of decoration of decoupage paper from decoupage central that is on the website this morning and so i am tearing off all the different pieces of um, florals because i want to decorate this little rabbit and i separate all the different flowers and i'm going to put a little bit here and a little bit there and then i'm going to fill in the spaces with something else because um there is a creator and it's um the, her name is Denise Parker, and um, she's on Facebook, and she came up with something like this last year, where she used a lot of different things to decoupage a little rabbit with. So I put that on with decoupage varnish and glue, and I didn't paint the back side of this decoupage paper because um, the little rabbit is already that chiffon cream. Now, this is a napkin that I'm going to fill in all those little spaces, and it has a lot of script on it. And if you've not used a napkin before, 
Um, this one had three different plies and you just, I take a little piece of painter's tape and I put it on either side and then I get it down all the way down to that first ply. Now, some people can kind of lick their fingers or do different things to separate it, but I'm just not good at that. So I just use a little piece of painter's tape. And so I just tear little pieces here and there. And I put that on a whole lot easier because napkins um, will tear so easy. And then I definitely wait overnight to, you know, kind of use my little finger sander to sand around the edges. Only because that napkin, it is so thin. Now, if, you'll, if you noticed a while ago when I showed you that napkin, when I pulled around apart the two the three different plies the white part that was up underneath it still had that script on it so never throw those napkins away or those excess pieces because you know you can use them for so much but that particular piece it still has a little bit of script writing on it and it's really faint but that could be used in a project later on now some of those pieces of that napkin kind of overlapped on those flowers and so i waited until it dried to pull it off now, I want to bring out the wrinkles in this napkin today. And, you know, that's not something that we normally do. But I like, I take, you know, to those little wrinkles to kind of sometimes show. So I take this gesso, or you could use white paint, and I just lightly dry brush it over the top of it. And it helps those wrinkles to pop out. And then I just use Tim Holtz Distressing Ink to go all around the edges just to kind of give a little bit of depth to it. And it just finishes off those edges. And it's kind of tricky right there where the ears are and, you know, his little back. Um, so I just kind of take my time on this. But it just adds enough distressing to where it just adds an extra layer of depth on this. Now, if I'd had like a an ink that was olive green, that would have worked as well. And then I just take a lot of different scraps of lace, and I found a little piece of um, an antique book, and I just tore a little piece, and I'm going to make just a little um, floppy bow. And then this is a button, and it has one of those little loops on the back. So it's plastic, and so I just am going to put that on the top in the center, and I just put it down with the hot glue gun. And I have a little bit of like the olive green ribbon, and that's what I use up underneath to kind of pull that green out of this particular design. So what do you think? I love it. I just think it's so sweet. And this is what it looks like. Now, that little green tassel, it's actually some ribbon that I ordered to be able to use. And that's the way it came, and I really like it. So um, I don't know if I'm going to use that ribbon or not. I, I like it as a tassel, so I might kind of hang on to it like that. But that's one of my favorite colors is that green. And um, especially, you know, down here in the South, we, do, we love our camo. Um, and so it's that kind of camo color green. Now, these are the, some more papers that are going to be coming out today on the website. And look at that cross. That's going to be coming up soon. And I love it. I'm so excited. So I've got some ideas about how I'm going to use this one. But this one truly reflects the meaning of Easter and how Christ died on the cross for us. Now, the opposite side of the paper of that little goat was that little pig. And I thought about using that one, too, because my dad's favorite movie was Babe, that little movie about that pig. And so both of those pieces I just love. Now, um, I used a smaller version of this in my last video, but this is just a bigger version of the bunny sitting in the blue truck. Now, look at this paper. Oh, it's got like a bicycle in it, and it's got reds in it. It is beautiful. So, John L. from Decoupage Central, um, I am on her creative team, and she sent me all of these papers, and they'll be in future videos, so you be watching. And look at that beach one. And she also has gotten a new um, order in from the IOD molds, and this is an older one, and it's the seashells. So, um, be looking for this decoupage paper and this mold, and I'm going to marry those together. 
and come up with a beautiful design. And I love those houses in the background. And the beach is my favorite place to go, especially when it's time to relax. But um, that particular mold, it's got a lot of different shells on it. Now, now look at this one. Um, I want to say, oh gracious, I want to say that's Oh, is it a walrus or some kind of sea creature? I, I don't know, but I love the way he's just kind of up there on the beach, just kind of just chilling. And this is one. Um, look at this. Won't this be great for the fall? Um, but John L said that she'd had a lot of requests for like fall and or Halloween designs. So she added some of those as well. But number one, I love this paper of the cross. And I will be using that probably in the next week or so. Um, but I've got an idea about how I'm going to use it. So friends, we are at the end of the video today. So just a recap of what I made today. I made, I made my little goat son. And that is Luther's sister. And she's a little bit rustic. And she's a whole lot of glam. And so then I've also got that little... Um, little Vienna sausage pot, um, little, the little sausages, the little pot with the flowers in it, and I've got my little rabbit. So in the comments below today, tell me which one is your favorite. And have you, have you ever had an experience being around goats? Now, I have a really funny story about that goat, but we would have to be really good friends, and I'd have to tell you in person, because it's, it's pretty funny, but it's, not something I would want to put on my video, but um, if my mom watches this video, she's going to know exactly what I talk about. But I love all my projects today, but let me know which was your favorite. So once again, if you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And just to let you know, your comments always are so sweet, and I appreciate you so much, and have a wonderful weekend.